Milano Sanremo, the traditional start of the classic season. Route changes have been the main talking point in the lead up to the first monument of the year, but it's poor weather that's the issue on race day itself. Could the pre-race big hitters overcome each other and the elements? The peloton rolled out under a foreboding sky with 294 tough kilometres ahead. An early break is being quickly reeled in as we join the action on the Cipressa with just over 25 kilometres remaining. Cotton Kirby and Daniel Lloyd pick up the story. Alex Vicenzo, Nibali has suddenly popped out and he's going long. Who's going to go with him? Nibali goes on the attack up the Cipressa. This is hugely long. Well, they said he didn't suit him. Well, he looks well suited to the task right now, and as yet, there's no response. Everyone is just keeping the pendulum swinging. 13 seconds is all they've got over Nibali, and they have 39 seconds over a pack of pacemen. 105th running of the race and running brilliant at the moment is Nibali. He's going to sail straight by these guys. Look at this. He's barely pedalling at all. He knows the lines and he can take every single one of them. Powers out of it and says, see you guys. Uh, this is my party and you're not invited. The road kicks up and Nibali has now got to drive into this. He's only got 13 seconds. I don't think he can do this. No, it's looking doubtable now, isn't it? 13 seconds, not a very big gap, and it came plunging down very quickly once we saw Sky and then Lotto coming up towards the front. Gregory Rast comes up onto the wheel of Vincenzo Nibali and straight past the Italian. Day over for Nibali, but what a fantastic attack by him. Nibali's attack is brave, but ultimately doomed. Over the final climb, Gregory Rast, Enrico Battaglin and Philippe Gilbert all make a break for glory. However, over the top of the Poggio and the descent into San Remo, all attacks are neutralised. We rejoin the action with just less than a kilometre to the finish. All the main players remain in contention. Who's going to have the legs of the sprint in the end? It's a different sprint at the end of 300 kilometres. Well, what and who and why and when and how? There is Cancellara, there is Sagan, there is Czarnak. Oh, and there's Cavendish as well. And Greipel right towards the back, but it's too late for Greipel. Oh, and there is Philip Gilbert over towards the uh, barriers as well. They turn in, they take this long and lazy, and suddenly somebody has got to light this one up. Who's it going to be? Cavendish in about 12th position on the wheel of Navadowskis from... Oh, oh, we've had a crash within the pack just behind. A big check over the shoulders. Everybody's just wondering how they're going to go for this one. Oh, Greipel's nowhere to be seen, but there is Cavendish. On the wheel of Madonna. Oh, Madolo is the winner as well. He's got a teammate. Who's going to lead out who? Van Avermaet goes on the left-hand side of the road. Madolo comes on the right. Cavendish launches his sprint. Oh, over to the right side of the car. Oh, he's Cavendish in the white. Sagan trying to trace him. Oh, it's a great wheel to pick. Cavendish hits the front right now. Dead center of your screen. Oh, my goodness. Cavendish moves the set. It is Christoph that's going to get this one. Christoph demolishes the field. Unbelievable stuff. How brave was that so late on? A glorious picture that will be gracing the cycling press. The winner of the Milan San Remo, the 105th edition. It's Alexander Kristoff. Uh, I feel great. It was a fantastic victory, and uh, Luca helped me a lot in the final. And uh, yeah, I didn't really believe it when I crossed the line that I that I won San Remo. I, I was hoping maybe for a top 10 finish and to win. Uh, it's incredible. Confirmation of the top ten. Cancellara second again, while Ben Swift has his best ever result in a classic. Glory goes to Team Katusha's Alexander Kristoff as the Norwegian celebrates the biggest win of his career.